What's up, everybody, and welcome to What's in Your Glass. As you know, I'm your host, Carmelo Anthony. Um, but before we get going, let's first welcome to today's guest. Uh, you know him for his role as M'Baku in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, including Black Panther, uh, Avengers, Infinity, uh, Infinity War, uh, and Avengers Endgame. Uh, you also know him as the role as Gabe in Jordan Peele's 2019 horror film, Us. So please welcome to the show, my brother, Winston Duke. Welcome, my brother. Hey. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you, man. Uh, likewise, likewise, man. Oh, you got you got something. Let's let's make a virtual chair. You do the virtual glass. chairs. You do the virtual the virtual <laughs> chair. We go we 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 go we go get to that. We go we go get to that. What? Love it. I love let's, it. I let's, love let's, it. Let's 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 start let's start at the beginning, right? Mm. For, for 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 those who don't know, for for my fans who may not be uh, well aware of, of your upbringing and how you got to where you are today. Uh, I'll just give them a little little background. You were born in Trinidad and Tobago uh, before moving to the states when you was nine years old. What was what was life like growing up before you before moving to the U.S.? Oh man! So I always remember my life as a kid with with so much like beauty and and love and joy and 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 you know it it fed me and kind of created the man that everyone like knows today. You know what I mean? And the wonderful thing about rich childhoods is that you never really realize it when it's happening. You know what I mean? Um, the, the Caribbean for me was full of story. My mother was one of like 12 kids. My father has a large family as well. So, I mean, I, I feel like I'm related to almost half of the entire island of Tobago, which is <laughs> a population of 60,000, you know what I mean? So it's not very big. At 16 years old, when we went back uh, for the first time, my mother on the plane was like, listen, all right, you're not allowed to beat anybody. <laughs> Everybody, your cousin, all right? And I was like, yo, <laughs> she's kidding. So I get down there. And the first girl I meet was like this girl working in like this doctor's office and her and I are vibing and she's like liking me. I'm liking her. I tell my cousin who's coming for the day to come see me. He's like two years older than me at the time. I was about 16. Um, and I'm telling him about this girl at the doctor's office. He comes he's like, yeah, let me meet her. Let me meet her. And so he goes, oh, cool, cool, cool. After meeting her. And he goes, you know, that's your cousin, right? <laughs> like shit you know what i mean and then she was there he said this right in front of her she blows up she's like shit my cousin <laughs> couldn't do nothing you know what i mean so it's like the whole island almost is family but childhood was running on the beach childhood was hearing all these beautiful stories about you know what the island was like before electricity came folklore um mad dramatic people everybody in tobago and trinidad is hella dramatic for no reason <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you've met one or two <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the island life baby that's the island life. that's island that's <laughs> island so like that was my childhood my childhood was having a big family every sunday somebody's dropping off something some sort of bread cake food um we have a festival known as harvest festival where every town trades off which weekend they're doing a harvest festival and they invite the entire island to their town to just eat and house hop so everyone in that town cooks and people just come to your house eat drink dance go to another house eat drink dance for a whole weekend damn i need right? that <laughs> imagine that imagine that imagine that. i need that. That i need I, I need that energy your, but your your, yeah. your your family your family ended up moving to to Rochester, New York, upstate. Yeah. Like, how, yeah. How, how 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 was that adjustment going from you know Trinidad to Rochester? Because that's that's a major adjustment. Cold. Cold. Cold yeah. I, I went. To, I was at Syracuse, so I know what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> Shit was cold as hell, man. It was it was it was really cold. I learned really quickly what. You know, you probably experienced this. That it's called seasonal depression. Mm, absolutely. Right? <laughs> so during during the 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 winter months, you don't get a lot of sunlight, and you don't realize that just simple things like this, which is just access to like UV rays in in a certain kind of way, affects 
your your mind and 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 your mental health. You know how much vitamin D you're getting, all that stuff. So I I felt seasonal depression, especially coming from a place where it's always sunny. We only got two seasons in Trinidad and Tobago. We got wet season and dry season. Wow. Right? Yeah, for sure. And they and they're both hot. You know. So. <laughs> <laughs> so so after so so after uh you know you move from you transition from you know Trinidad to, to Rochester, you you mm. you then you then attended University of Buffalo, right? Receiving yeah. a BA in theater and, and then Yale School of, of Drama, kind of where mm. you just where you receive your master of fine arts in, in acting. Yeah. So going going into college, did you know did you know you wanted to study acting? No, I didn't. I didn't. I always had the interest. So my interest in acting started in high school and, you know, TV and all that storytelling, consuming pop culture was my way into understanding America. You know what I mean? So I watched a lot of stuff I was reading. You would never expect, but it was like comic books, like things like that. All, a lot of pop culture, music videos, like when I came to the States, you know, the, the East Coast, West Coast rap beef was the big thing at the time. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, so like learning American culture through pop culture, learning how to be an American man of color, you know what I mean? Was, I learned it from TV, you know what I mean? Like I learned it from music. I learned it from, you know, all that kind of stuff. That wasn't, you know, that was my, our way of being from like back in Trinidad in the same way. Um, so I fell in love with storytelling from consuming pop culture and I started doing it in, in high school. And by the time I got to college, my immigrant background was kicking in where my family's like, you want to pretend to be people for a living? What? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> why'd you pretend to be a lawyer? Why don't you pretend to be a doctor? Why don't you pretend to be a, you know what I mean? Like they were like trying to get me to do everything that's just like, you know, we risked everything to come here and, and we don't, I don't even know what an actor is. Like, mm. you know, it was such a far cry, but it was really watching my sister pursue her dream to become a doctor. Wow. That made me go, we don't, I don't need a blueprint. I just need intention. So, wow. yeah. So I went into college with, with, with a, a focus on like pre-law and then eventually by my junior year got into theater, which is what I wanted to do. And I always say that acting opened up the door for me to understand everything else right so i wasn't good at math i wasn't good at science at the time i played sports in high school so i did like you know american football i did track and field i did a lot of things but it never like took hold you know where it was like i had that drive to pursue it as a like a, a lifestyle and and for the rest of my life wow. and then once i found acting i realized that my brain thinks in story so for the first time I understood mathematics because I understood language and I understood the word, like the story around mathematics. I understood, you know, I understood chemistry and I, I fell in love with like physics. I fell in love with everything because acting and storytelling was my door in. I understood sports differently because there's sports, there's, there's what you do as the athlete, which is the, cr the craft and the passion. And then there's a larger business outside and around sports. There's narrative, there's marketing, there's tons of storytelling being told. You know what I mean? There's publicity. There's everything around what we do, that story, that, that story is, is, is the common denominator. And once I understood that, it gave me an inlet into understanding the world completely differently. So I always kind of thank acting and storytelling for really helping my brain start figuring out the conversations with the world that I wanted to have and the conversations with everything and everybody that I wanted to have. Wow. And and you I mean you mentioned something that's that was that was kind of eye opening and 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 touching for me when you said you didn't you didn't you didn't you wasn't good at mathematics. You wasn't good at chemistry and all of that when you was when you was studying in, in the school. But once you got outside of that and you got into life, 
life forced you to learn mathematics. Life forced you to mm-hmm. learn chemistry and, and, and physics and, and just science. Like, that's who we are. We, we, we're made yeah. up of that. We're made up of it's, it's science and mathematics at the yes. end of the day. That's who we yeah. are. So for you to pick that up years later, it's, it's, it's touching to me. It's interesting to me because I was always good at math and I always loved science. But I never, I never applied it to life. I never applied that to the way of life until I got older right. and really started looking at things in a mathematical, you know, from a mathematical and science viewpoint. Uh, and then that's when you be, that's when you get, you retain knowledge of self. At the end of the day, you start knowing who you are. You start 100%. knowing your surroundings. So it's, I, I, I'm glad, that, I'm glad to hear you, you know, to touch touch on that on that point right there. When 100%. when did you, when 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 did you realize you you had a talent? For acting and, and wanted to pursue it full time. So that started in high school. Um, that started with you know kind of coming out of my shell. Like I said, I was like a, a an immigrant kid who was trying to figure out the ways to be. And then once I found, I wanted I wanted to express myself, and essentially it was me in Spanish class doing a presentation. And I was nervous. And the second I started kind of performing the presentation, it all went away. Spanish teacher said, man, counterintuitively, you're not shy anymore when you're in front of people. Took me and signed me up for the school play in high school. Damn. Once I got what, you know, you know, thank God for the blessing of, of teachers and, and people who have that sight to see more in you sometimes than you're aware of in yourself. So that's one thing I always thank that. Spanish teacher, Mrs. Spear from Brighton High School um, for doing. And, you know, um, I always like that. That was the, that was the thing. That was the thing I wanted. I realized that like storytelling brought me closer to everything. Like I, I, I got out of my shell. I started performing. I did a school play. I felt accomplished in a different way. And that's when the bug, the acting bug took hold. Right. And then it really manifested and came, you know, came to fruition in college. You know what I mean? Like I finally like started acting and being in like organized plays, studying acting, understanding stage presence and the craft in college. And then realized that if I wanted to do it professionally, I needed to take it the next step further and just go to a conservatory for a master's so that I could have a career. You know what I mean? Right, absolutely. And you're and, and speaking of career, your career began by you doing kind of smaller roles in TV shows before really before 100%. really taking off. But what like what was the initial grind like coming out of school and like trying to book TV shows? Because I, I, I know that I know the grind of, of of what that is. But for you to be a full time actor um, in, in 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 theater and in and all of that, I'm sure it was I'm sure it was difficult trying to you know find those roles when it came to you know TV. Big facts. I mean, it was a lot of rejection. And at the time, you're not aware that there's so many other factors that are happening. Um, why you might not get this role and some and a lot of them have nothing to do with you personally. So it's really hard to separate being told no over and over when you know that you're good and you have full confidence in yourself. But it's that awareness that keeps you going. So it was a lot of no's. It was a lot of, you know, you're very specific, which I am. I'm six foot five, like right now, 285. You know, I'm a big man. Um, I have a really big presence. And if people don't really understand what that means and are really specific in the conversations they want to have with an audience using your person, they won't understand that you're the right one. You know what I mean? But after Black Panther, you know, a lot of opportunities completely changed because the conversations we start having with, with, with audiences changed. You know what I mean? How they look at black bodies in space. We're not going to take credit for it, but we definitely helped shape some of the contributed to the, a larger con- conversation around how black bodies function and that there's tons of nuance. You know what I mean? Like for a very long time in Hollywood, black bodies are seen as this monolith, right? They're all one in the same. Right, absolutely. Which, you know what I mean? And in Black Panther, you literally had 
an entire cast of black people, black, different, different shades, different color, different backgrounds, different, you know, all of these things come together to establish nuance. And right there, helping to reprogram a culture that doesn't see a spectrum, you know? Damn. And yeah, no, that's, that's insightful. Yeah, so pre um, doing that, it was I was already turning down a lot of roles while not having a lot of power. So I remember the one thing that I remember knowing I had the power to do was to say no. So I always was like, I'm not playing, you know, the second like gang member. I'm not gonna play the, <laughs> the dude robbing this person. I'm not gonna play this nameless super predator <laughs> you know what i mean and i remember just saying no to those roles and my intention always led to the right things coming you know what i mean a lot of a lot of sleepless nights memorizing five different scenes for five auditions the next day and getting mm. five no you're not it no 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 until the right thing came but that clarity on I know this is for me because I understand the world differently, finally, because what I'm doing now, I'm on the right path. And then I'm a spiritual dude, man. Like I remember when I auditioned for Black Panther and I got through the final stage, the last audition for it. I gave it everything I had and I came home and I took a shower and I shit you not, I heard a voice while showering and the voice was just like, you did your best. You're on the right path. Whether you get this or you don't, you will get it. You'll get the thing and you're on the right path. And I had never, I don't know where it came from. I don't understand what it was, but it was clarity. And I, I it was told to me. You get me? Absolutely. And that's what made yeah. me go, I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. You know what I mean? I'm on the right path. And then about two to three days later, got the call being like, you need a lawyer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing you they say, you need a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, you need a lawyer. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get this, this contract worked out. <laughs> so, but your, 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 your breakthrough role, you know, obviously mm -hmm. came in, in, in the Marvel Universe. You know, one of, one of the biggest movie franchise there is. How did, you know, you, you mentioned you got the call two, three days after the, you know, the audition, but how did you react to getting that cast in the role? Because it's like the, the, the energy that was behind Black Panther at that time, it was bigger than the movie. It was, a, it was, a, it was a movement. It was, it was empowerment. It was women empowerment. It was black superhero. It was touching on topics that we were dealing with in our in our society and our community right. as black as black communities. So to put that into the Marvel universe that has yeah. never been done, has never been done before, and you get the call. How did you react to that? So there's two answers to what you're asking me. <laughs> so the first answer, right, which is that whole movement. That larger macro, this is what it means and this is what it is, was after the fact okay. of it being seen and consumed and impacting people. Before that, it was just another job. Okay. It was a job that was really secretive, right? So I didn't find out really what I was auditioning for until maybe the day of the last audition. Because they were just giving me fake sides and fake things to read and stuff like that. Right? Damn. So it was an untitled Marvel project. And for the most part, it had a lot of um, potential at that point. Right? It was like Ryan Coogler coming off of doing Fruit Val and Creed. It was like, man, we got a great director. Got Michael B. Jordan on it, coming off of Fruit Val, Creed, a number of other cool things. Lupita, you know, coming off of that. And it was like the three of them and Chadwick Boseman, who was doing incredible work at the time. So mm -hmm. the pro project was coming together with a lot of potential. 
So getting the job, I was just like, oh man, this is an opportunity and I can't wait. Finally, I'm getting, you know, a lot of what I've been putting out in the universe, which is I was saying all the time, I was like, I want a big job. There's a lot of content out here. There's a lot of things being done, but I want a job that allows for me to cut through the ether, you know, like people to really see and hear and have a big impact. And I was just saying that over and over. I was just saying that over and over. No one could really hear it, but my soul. Feel me? Absolutely. So I kept putting out the intention. I want a, I want a big fish, baby. I want a, a big fish. And then that came. Tears came down. I only told my mom and sister who, you know, had signed the NDA already not to say shit. <laughs> couldn't say nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Couldn't say anything. <laughs> the, the Mickey Mouse got me. You know what I mean? <laughs> he had me, he had me wrapped up. And um, just keeping it like locked up in there and just real remembering that, cool, this is the first step. A lot of work's going to have to happen after this. A lot of work. A lot of work. So we did the work. We made it. We built it. We were doing all this stuff creating came together almost like a theater company because ryan and us were like working real close and he gave us so much trust you know what i mean because what he hired were deep creatives you know what i mean like he hired people he could have conversations with he right. trusted in what i call like the the collective conscious right so he was always talking with other people, like having them read the script, like this person who's another great creative read the script and did this. Ryan, a very trusting, open collaborator. And midway through maybe the, the shoot, all of us at the same time, collective conscious again, pulls out, we're on set while we're shooting that, 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 that challenge day scene, it's challenge day. Yep. Which is a big build for, it's a really big build of a set because they built a, an entire waterfall. Damn. And we have this, this group that's called the Royal Burundi Drummers. And Burundi is a country where those drummers weren't allowed to play for anyone but the royal family at one point. And we had them as some of the drummers for the scene, that royal scene. Yeah, it's incredible. And between, crazy, right? And then between, to keep the 200 extras on set excited and have energy, we were like kind of playing around and someone was like, play, you know, drop it like it's hot by Snoop. <laughs> they got <laughs> it always It always royal come drummer. back to Snoop. It always come back you know to Snoop. Right? <laughs> so they're like, boom. Boom, 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 boom. And we're all like, me and Daniel Kaluuya are like on the sideline being like, yo, this is madness. Do you see what we're doing right now? Do you see what we're doing? Like, not only are we making this beautiful movie, it's all being impacted by like diasporatic culture. So you have the history of the Burundi drummers meeting at an intersection with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> the past and the present coming together to create something that's going to impact the future. And that was the first time we really got a glimpse of what you described in your question, which was the movement. Right. And then when the move, movie came out, that's when it became that like, movement where everybody was like, oh my God, what is this? It's it's the image of like a potential black future where we exist and we have powers and we're like, like, can you imagine? Like it was global and it took a bunch of creatives and turned them into what you would, you could think of as diplomats for this like fictional world. Cause that's what we kind of became after the movie. We became these like fictional diplomats for Wakanda. Right. But how do you how did you how did you deal with the pressure of being in in, in that, you know, I, I, you know, not not just Wakanda, but the, or the fictional, you know, place of Wakanda, but Mar in the Marvel Universe, because it's a, it's a lot of pressure. I mean, you you coming out with 
they they not they knocking them out back to back to back. And so here's mm. now we have this we have this this black conglomerate that's coming on that's coming together to create a movement that you're explaining that you didn't even understand the movement at at the time. But you know Marvel, the Marvel universe is a movement in in its mm. own right. That's a different that's a different type of movement. So how did you deal with with the pressure of being in that Marvel universe and being in, on on an all black cast, with Black Panther, so much pressure with that? The impact kind of took care of itself. Okay. So, what we became and what the movie meant to people in that movie, and I will always I always fight to say we need to let Black Panther just be Black Panther. Like Black Panther meant more to people because that individual movie was something completely different that revolutionized everything in its own right. And anything that will come after is gonna be something different. Right. Even if it does have a big impact, it's not gonna be that. You know what I mean? But absolutely that that movie the 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 what we were and our meaning kind of took care of itself because people were the like the fans and people and all the people of different backgrounds, different even race backgrounds, cultural backgrounds were the ones that added their own narratives to why this needed to be, right? And they gave us a lot of the, the speaking points by, you know, how they, how it impacted them and how it changed their lives. And we just really had to be in a position to like watch and listen and respond. Mm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I think we did that. We did that really well. When it comes to what Marvel was as a business, I joke about it. I joke about it, but I do not believe a corporation can understand what that movie was. So even while it was being made, I don't believe they knew what it was. Hell we, no. <laughs> and they, <laughs> you know what I mean? We innately did. And I always say this about really good art, bro. Like I always say this about really good art, really, really good movies, music, everything. Really great art is smuggling, right? You're smugglers. Really great art, you smuggle in depth and importance and meaning. And you find that shit after the truth is unearthed. And everyone goes, oh man, that's seven, eight, nine, ten layers deep below what was seen, you know? So like it's a deeper conversation being had above the action, you know, below the action, below that surface level thing that you believe that it's about, which is you think it's about a bunch of superheroes trying to save a country, but in reality, it's about so much more. And it's your job as like act artists to smuggle in depth to smuggle in meaning, to smuggle in everything. I think that's kind of all our jobs, especially in a world that's governed by a lot of corporate interest and capitalistic interest and interest. Are, like it's our job to make things deeper, to enrich the consumer-based world. You know what I mean? Indeed, like, indeed, indeed. You know what I mean? And you, and, but it, so, okay. So you went from, you went from one extreme of, Black, the Black Panther, I would call it the Black Panther movement, right? Mm. The Black Empowerment Movement to starring in the Jordan Peele movie, right? It's like, what, like, what, what was the casting process like for you with that? So that really beautifully said by you was going from one extreme to another, which was instead of auditioning, I went to a place where I had a lot of agency, where it was offered. They're like, we love what you did and what you meant and where you're coming from. Like, what do you think? Like, would you like to be like Jordan Peele reached out and was like, I would love to work with you on this. Right. And I was I was given a lot of agency. I was given the, the, the chance to choose. And all those muscles I was flexing before I even knew I had all that strength, which was to say yes or no, finally came to fruition after Black Panther came out where I could now pick and choose the roles, right? So who I am as an artist, the fact that I was refining that over all that time in the past was finally getting a, it's time to shine. So I said no to tons of projects after. And when Jordan Peele came along, I said, what is this thing? 
another opportunity for deep conversation with audiences, another conversation, another opportunity for, for that smuggling job mm-hmm. at the surface. It's, it's, it's a, you know, end of the world apocalyptic situation <laughs> below it. It's a larger conversation about 10, 15, 20, 30 different things. And I said, wow, cool opportunity. Great. I get to be the image of an American father that most people don't get to see in films. How do I make that minor? How do I make that playful? And how do I get to say a bunch of shit without saying a bunch of shit? <laughs> you know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, without, yeah. without saying it on the surface. And I said, cool, I get to create. I get to be creative again and I get to world build because that's what's really cool about, you know, what they did in Black Panther is they created a whole world. We got to world build. We got to assist in creating a world. And then with Jordan Peele, same thing, I to assist in building a world again. And, you know, for me, that was, that was, that was a layup. You know, that was, that was a no brainer. So what, so were you, were you, were you a fan of horror films before starring in this one? I was not, was not. You know what okay. I mean? Like the history of what? horror films, like we didn't make it out usually. <laughs> we die early. <laughs> <laughs> we we they, they get us out of there early. <laughs> but so okay, so early, so Joe and Pill, right? So so Joe and Pill, I mean, incredible director, producer. Mm. How would you how would you describe Jordan Pill's directing style? I'm always intrigued on different on different directors and their style of, of directing. How would you how would you describe uh Jordan Pill's directing style? Oh man, Jordan is Jordan is constantly working, constantly working on the script. So like the script is finished by the first day of shooting. And then like before every scene that we shoot, he's reworking it and we're like working on it together. And like for my character, a big thing for me is just to un- understand what the function of my character is in any project. And once I understand the function, I could like lean right into that bad boy and play it with like reckless abandon, right? Which is my guy is the clown. It's not the clown in the like sense of, you know, a derogatory term like, oh, a fool or something. So I'm talking about the classic definition of of literary clown, which is the truth uh-huh. teller. He gets to be the voice of the audience, he gets to say the, the craziest shit that's <laughs> honest and truthful. You know what I mean? He gets to speak truth to power. The clown was the only one that could speak the truth to the king back in the day, but as a joke. You know what I mean? So, like, I go, oh, cool, he's the clown. So I get to be irreverent inside of a situation that's completely reverent. That's completely about, like, a serious fucking situation and topic. I can cuss on your program, bro. No, you do whatever you want to do, man. You, you, drink, a, <laughs> you drink a tequila on there, so you can do <laughs> Uh, one step, and I'm like, fucking motherfucking. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's you got to be both honest and irreverent. And I was like, cool, let me do that. And then when it comes to anything that involves humor, there's no better person to blend humor and like something that and some sort of commentary right? and consciousness Humor and commentary and consciousness right and consciousness. so that's that's jordan peele so we're working on things and he's like oh cool let me see it this way da 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 love it slaps me up i do it like i do the scene um we work through everything i come to him with ideas he loves it we like incorporate that thing a lot of improv because i love improvising if i know i like saying give me all the rules and I'll memorize all the rules. And once I know the rules completely, I can break them freely. Mm, powerful. That's that's yeah. powerful. But that's also theater. That's also a theater of mine, too. Yeah. That's I I give credit to, to you being in, in theater doing that. So I always say yeah. you can do if you start off with theater first, you can conquer whatever you want in, in, in any in, yeah. in, in any role theater. or anything. Yeah, it's like you learn you learn the basics and you learn the rules. You learn how to recognize and play within the rules. And then once you got it. It's gone. It's golden. It's it's, it's yeah. golden. So switch. So switching gears a bit. Switching gears a bit. It was it, it was recently announced that uh, you 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 were casted for the Bruce Wayne uh, uh, as Bruce as as a as Bruce Wayne in the podcast uh, audio trauma. Yeah. 
uh, Batman Unburied. What can you tell? What can you tell us about the project? Ah uh, man, all I can tell you is that it's a different look at the Batman narrative and the Batman character. So the given circumstances are a lot different than you've seen Batman. So he's going to sound different. He's going to feel different until he comes back to a space where it feels more like the Batman that you've received in the past. You know what I mean? So it was a great opportunity to play around, play around with how he feels, how he thinks, give Batman a lot more vulnerability because he's a character that's usually very guarded and like fully formed. You know, so it was an opportunity to play around with the Batman narrative. And, you know, um, for me, it, it was really great to like just play around with what my voice meant, just what my voice meant and what it could be attached to like a different narrative than anyone could really think of. And that's, you know, that's Batman. So, yeah. And, and it's so what you, what you just said, uh, playing with your voice and, and for, with a different narrative, which which leads me to a question I want to ask. Like yeah. what is it? What what is it? What is it preparing? What is it like preparing for a dramatic role over audio? Right? It's it's mm. like how like how like how does that compare to preparing for an, an on camera role? Because it's it's totally different. <laughs> in theory, <laughs> in theory, in theory. But for the for, for the average person who's listening yes. to this, you know, you might be like, oh, he's playing a role. It's it's, a, it's an audio role. It's not an act, you know. It's not a. It's not an. You know, a, a, a on camera role. Describe the difference, man. So my 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 description is actually not very. It's not going to blow your mind in the sense of I approach everything very similarly, right? So the only big difference was to shoot that whole season. I didn't have that much time while shooting Black Panther. Oh, so this was right. going parallel to Black Panther? It's going parallel, right? <laughs> so I'm working on like multiple things and it's like, my process is my process. My process is I got to do the whole thing as if I'm acting as if it's on his feet. So I'm like working on Batman and Bruce Wayne as if I'm on my feet. You know what I mean? I have to like put it inside my body and, and internalize it to like make it true and honest. And that's how I find it. I have to find it through an honest lens in myself, you know? So, you know, in this case, that 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 common idiom of how you do one thing is how you do everything mm. applies, right? Absolutely. Intention. Intention. Absolutely. You know, intention is everything. I say that in every way. Like your life is as your life is as effective as your as as the clarity of your int intention. That's really what it is. Hmm. So okay. So and and, and lastly, right, and on, on on this topic of what you what you actually focused on, you 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 you're going to play somebody who uh, I study, somebody I look up to, uh, somebody who's a who's a major part of how I move, how I operate, how I think on a on a on a conscious level, and just for in in my community and for our people. You're about to be playing Marcus Garvey in, 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 in Amazon's uh, Mark Man. Like, what what are you looking forward to this to this project? Because he was deep. Like, Mark, Marcus was, you know, for those yeah. who don't know, Marcus was was he was a pioneer. I mean, we all know he's a pioneer. He's a leader. Uh, you know, he he was a trendsetter. But most importantly, what he what he thought of here, his mental, his, yeah. his consciousness, yeah. his level of consciousness, his global consciousness. You know, not just yeah. his, you know, domestic consciousness was was on a whole nother level. And it was it was it was really before his time. So for you to have the opportunity to be playing Marcus Garvey, like what what are you looking forward to with that? I'm looking forward to what is the obvious challenge. You know what I mean? I always compare that to being a mountain climber. Like I'm looking at this mountain, and right now all I'm doing is preparing for the climb. And I have to have incredible reverence for that mountain. I can't just say, oh yeah, it's just another mountain or it's just another thing. Like this is a specific mountain. So I have to study that mountain, study the different climates and what's happening on it. How do I ascend? And also once I'm up there, how do I come back down, mm. right? Do I need guides? Do I need, you know, what, how do I prepare? So right now 
I'm approaching this as someone who knows nothing. And that's the most reverence that I can have. So once I enter my process, everything is new. Everything is, 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 is consumed without judgment. And I got to prepare for this climb, Damn. you know, like who he is and what he's meant and the iconography is one thing, but I'm also, I have to find out who this man was as a human being and do my best to embody that and internalize that and be respectful while also being honest and hopefully impartial because the man being a human being means that he couldn't have, he, he's, he's neither all light and he's neither all dark. You know what I mean? He, he lives in duality and he lives in complexity and nuance. So to climb that mountain, I have to really prepare. And that's kind of where I'm at. That's my answer to how do I feel about it? I respect it. I respect that climb and it could be very dangerous. Yeah, oh, for sure. For, no, absolutely. You and know? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm following you on a on a, on a whole nother mental level when you, when you say yeah. that you you got to climb that mountain, but also figure out how to get back down that mountain without tumbling down, without falling down. 100%. How do I get back down without without falling down? Because when yeah. you when you when you are when you when you're portraying somebody who as who's as powerful as Marcus Garvey, who's as complex as as Marcus Garvey. I, you, I can't tell you how to do that. You can't, you don't even know how to do that. It's something that you got to just tap into and- It's inside the process. Right, absolutely. You got to trust the process. You got to trust the process. Yes. You have to- I'm, you I'm find looking forward that to that. In the process, yeah. So you find that in the process, you find that in the doing. And it's one of those things like I can't speak to what it is, how it's going to be, what it means mm. until I do the do. You know what I mean? Mm. So that's Are you intimidated? Very. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I know that's that's a real that's a real question, right? That's yeah. a, I mean, anytime yeah. you plan somebody of of, of that stature, you know, yeah, that's yeah. like you know that's like Malcolm X, you know, you know, uh, what's the name playing Denzel playing Malcolm X? Like these these are yeah. these are icons that that we look up yeah. to that we you know that we can't mess that up. I'm not saying that you will, but I just know that no, there no, can no. there there can be there there can be and intimidation when it comes to portraying somebody of that stature and that caliber. So I wanted to hear, I, I wanted think, to know that. I think that's, I think that's healthy and I think that's necessary. I think that's necessary for anything that you have like reverence and like appreciation for. You have to have some level of intimidation because you recognize what it is. Like no man walks into war just excited. That means you don't understand what war is. Mm. No man walks into any big thing. You don't walk into marriage without some level of, of, of anything because that's, that's a big thing. That's a life changing thing. If you, if you are not intimidated or scared in some way, you don't understand what the thing is. You don't go into a fight. You know what I mean? Like the, the, everyone says, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? You don't know Absolutely. what it is until you're inside it. So you have to plan and prepare with reverence. You know what I mean? And that's the same thing. I think it's 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 as if you were in a pre-life situation. Could you say, if you understood what life is, now that you're a human being, you're here, you, you've gone through everything that you've gone through, things that we don't know. Winston Duke doesn't know what you've gone through. Man. Right. Things that you've gone through that were tough hard, painful, that's made you cry, that's this, losses you've had, wins you've had, everything. If you were in some sort of pre-life situation with the knowledge of what life is, would you not be scared? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you have some You have is. some level of scarcity, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really, for me, anything I do, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm very afraid of most things I do, and that's why I do them. Mm. It's the, mean, like, it's the unknown. It's the unknown. It's the unknown. I was afraid to step on stage the first time I ever stepped on stage. I was afraid to come to the United States. I was afraid to audition for grad school. I was afraid to like go on my first audition and every audition subsequently. I was afraid to go on dates. I was afraid of everything. You're, you're afraid of almost everything that you do, but it is that understanding and that reverence for the thing 
that makes you take it seriously and makes you good at what you do. So anytime mm. anyone's like not afraid, I'm always like, well, we're going to learn today. You know what I mean? <laughs> We go, we go, we go, we go. Learn today for sure, man. Before, we before we, today. before we, before we wrap, man. We, we, you know, I just want to talk about um, one of one of the most important initiatives that that you have going on right now. Um, I, I really wanted to just touch on the work that that you're actually doing with with he for she, um, and and for those who for those who don't know, um, he he for she is is a you know solidarity movement with the advance advancement of gender uh, equality. Um, how long have how long have you been a spokesperson for that movement, and and what is your message uh, to our listeners right now, in particular the men listening today? I've been uh, I've been with them since about 20, 2019. and um, the message is 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 the f- advocacy for women's rights and women's and and for equality around women and and equal pay and recognition of women and everything that that's that's all of our fight there are women in all of our lives and a woman who contribute in all of our lives that it's not solely you know it can't be solely boiled down or be reduced to just sexual or the othering of a woman it's it's all of our fight you know what i mean you have a mother you have a sister you have female friends you have daughters you have women in your life. It's half of the entire population. <laughs> if half of us aren't treated equally or don't have access to things, we all are suffering. So, you know, the box that women are placed in or when it comes to gender, men are placed in the same box because it's, it's placed in juxtaposition. Liberation for one is liberation for all. So if you never think it's your fight, you never think it's the, your thing, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And a lot of words have been taken from us. A lot of things, positive things have been taken from us and have been redefined to keep us trapped. So even words like feminism have been redefined into meaning something about hatred of men when it's really believing that women are equal and should be given equal rights as men in our world. Hmm. Simple. Do you know what I mean? It's simple. It's a simple. lot more simple than you think. And if that's what you believe, you're a feminist. Hmm. But there's a lot of, you know, we, we have to like, one of my things is really taking back uh, ownership over language. Because a lot of language is used against us to separate us and, and keep us apart and uh, distract us. When the honest truth of what it is, you know, you are that thing. We all are. I think if you love any woman and real, true love, which is you wish that person the best, you wish that person is best with you or without you, in mm. proximity to you and out of proximity to you, mm. you are a feminist. You know what I mean? If you truly love women, and you truly respect women, and women have really helped you in your life, you're a feminist. So, like, I, I usually give talks and, and have conversations on a more interpersonal level on how we all could be feminists interpersonally instead of like a macro view because a lot of people believe that we have to be doing all the big, big things. No, it's, it's, it's the small conversations. It's mm. the small ways that we, we, the small actions that we take that build into large action. Small actions that you take in your home impact how you vote small actions that you take, you know, in the workplace impact, you know, how you pay and how you see and represent women in your life, you know, and respect women in your life. So it starts from the small, it's the micro and the macro that come together to actually form true impact. Damn. And that's, 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 that's powerful, brother. Thanks for, thanks for giving us that. Um, Before, you know, bring it, bring it all back full circle to, to what's in your glass. Um, I, I just have a few quick fire, some light, lighthearted <laughs> questions. Uh, you know, I, I like to know what I like to know. My guests is drinking on certain certain occasions. Um, if you're if you're out on a vacation, what's in your glass? Tequila. Tequila. Okay. If you're out. <laughs> you're out. You're, you're out at dinner at a, at, a, at a nice at a nice restaurant. What's in your glass? 
Tequila. Tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. like tequila, man. It's going. No, it's indeed. Gonna, as you as as off. you should, as Blanco you should. Blanco or repo, you know what I mean? Okay, as you should. Okay, so you're you're celebrating. Uh, let me see. You you celebrating being casted as Mbaku and Black Panther? Yes. Champagne. Okay, champagne. Okay. Yes. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, you're celebrating Marcus Garvey. Mm. The life of Marcus Garvey. You're about to tap into something that not too many people will ever have the opportunity to do. This is our, you would be our new voice of Marcus Garvey when this project Jesus. comes out. I don't want to put no pressure. I don't want to put no pressure. But you, <laughs> you it's like, did. no, you but did. it's like, but listen, I'm going I'm, I'm to give you, you some, I'm going to give you perspective. I'm going to give you perspective. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you perspective though. <laughs> Denzel and Malcolm, mm. right? That's 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 how I'm looking at somebody playing you playing Marcus Garvey because of the caliber of people that they were during the times that they were um, ha had the position of power, right? So you're about to tap into this with this younger generation that will be watching this. They don't know about Marcus Garvey, so you will become you're going to go from Mbaku to Marcus Garvey. Right, which you should be celebrating at, at the end of the day. What's in your glass? I want to know what's going to be in your glass. After I gave you that perspective, what's going to be in your glass? What's in my glass? I, think I, need, <laughs> I think I need some green juice, bro. <laughs> I think I'm going to need something to feed, really feed the soul, man. I don't need, I don't need no spirits. <laughs> I'm going to need something to feed the soul. That's why I'm going to need some. I need a, a turmeric shot. That's what I'm gonna need. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need tell you what. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna through, tell you what I'm gonna tell you what, bro. I'm gonna tell you what. When is when it's all said and done, and that that you know that that role is wrapped up, and that movie is done, or that you know it's, that project is done, we gonna we gonna find each other, and we gonna have a, we gonna have a drink. We gonna have a drink, and we gonna we gonna talk about we gonna discuss the process. Please. Yeah. And let's 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 talk about the process. Let's discuss the process because it's something that, although I may have studied them, seeing it visually will be totally different. So I just want to take my hat off to you because that's a that's a, a very powerful role, and it's impeccable of you to be able to go out there and and and, and do your thing with that. So I'm, I'm giving you your flowers before you even start going on that path. So. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. And you know, I, I got to come correct because the Jamaicans are going to find me if I don't. Oh, for you sure. Know, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. You for sure. They waiting. You know, they waiting. You know they waiting. Is, man. You know what it is, man. I'm going to take it. Cheers to you. Thank Indeed, you. Indeed, my, my brother. I, I appreciate you, you, my brother. Boom. Indeed. Yes. I appreciate you. Indeed. Thank you.